cats everywhere and I'm trying to film anyway. Hey YouTube, so today I want to talk about um, planning witchcraft and scheduling it because we all know that mundane shit get in the way. It is all over the place. It's hard sometimes to like sit down and do it. So this is where I'm like, you know what? It's not just all about feeling that overwhelming magical inspiration to flow through me. I'm just going to cast a spell and cast a circle right here and now. A lot of times this stuff takes planning and some shit to do. So step by step, here's how I'm doing it. First thing that I do on the regular is um, think about two ways of that kind of determine what's the starting point for it. So step one is either, is there a Sabbath or a time of year that I want to do a spell around just because I feel called to it or I want to be connected during that time? Or is there a particular spell I want to do? And that, there's a reason that I ask this question, it's either one or two. There's a particular time, whether it's a certain moon cycle, major event like the eclipse recently passed by um, for North America in August, was it? Or is there like a Sabbath coming up? Like now there's Samhain coming. So I know I want to do something particular on Samhain. The reason I think of dates in a way is because if I want to do something just around that time because it's a once in a lifetime event or it's a once in a year event, then of course you want to look into the energies around that thing and make sure I'm definitely planning around the event. So I will customize a spell or a ritual to the event. I definitely did that with the eclipse. I customized a spell and a ritual uh, for Samhain. I'm doing that as well since it's a major Sabbath. I want to plan something around that day. So if you're going to do that, then you have a date in mind. You can look up when's the full moon, when's the new moon, when is it a crescent moon if you're looking with that waxing or waning or whatever you're doing with it and go from there. Or you could look into what type of spells do I want to do? Do I want to do an abundance spell, a love spell, something to do with spirits or conjuring, or am I manifesting certain things in my life and there's a certain spell I want to do? Since I'm still pretty new with this, I definitely stick with the first option more, but for everybody else, like, there's a spell you want to do, go for it. Second thing is determining the energies you want to be working with with that spell or ritual. If I am doing Samhain and for example, that's the spell I'm working on. I know for a fact it's gonna happen, of course, on the 31st of October. And what does that mean? That means that the veil is thin, a good time to work with spirits, and there are so many great things that come around with Samhain. So I do a huge history run of what Samhain means, what type of energies are around, so I know, okay, this is what kind of spells would work well for the Witch's New Year. Am I clearing out things? Am I bringing in new things? Same thing with what type of spell are you doing? I would, you would not want to, for example, necessarily do a spell abundance and greatness on a new moon. You could, but you'd want to take that into consideration going, okay, so if there's going to be a new moon on the night I want to do a spell about abundance, how am I writing that into it? How am I using the energy that is currently around with the new moon to do that? I don't necessarily think that you have to follow strictly what other witches have done with associations with um, the moon cycle or energies or stuff like that. It's just all about what works for you and how you're gonna manipulate and use it. But that's something to definitely take in consideration. What type of energies are gonna be around on the date or around the spell you're using. Third thing is supplies. So now that you've kind of deal with what energies you're doing, it's what supplies do you need? Is there, are you going to ramp up things? Do you need a thing like protection? So do you need to pick up some incense, candles, or anything of that line with association? Are there certain crystals that you're gonna research because you don't know much about, say, um, protection crystals or abundance crystals or anything like that? Is there a certain crystal that you want? And then doing this far enough in advance because now that you have your date and you know what energies are going on, you can go, okay, so by that time I will have this much money and I want to have these types of things. You know, it's, this is a time to really think about what tools you're using. Write them all down in a list and go through them and go, all right, so I definitely have that thing, that thing, that thing, but I need black candles for whatever reason. That's definitely something that I'm doing for Samhain. I'm hoping to basically put a little spirit into a container to put on my altar that I've been working with for a long period of time. I had to find a container. Uh, I looked up other spells that other witches have done to draw inspiration about it. I also wanted to use um, sigil magic in it, so I had to sit down into a meditative state and see what sigil I could conjure up from visions in my mind. I also knew I wanted to do a blessing spell with it with the harvest moon. Out some water out under the full moon with a certain crystal to help charge up that water way before Samhain. So it's things like that where you're like, it's not it's cost and also time. The fourth thing that you should do is 
look into any of the downsides of what you are doing, any other ramifications, and prepare for them. So by that means that it's like, I am taking a particular spirit on Samhain when the veil is thin and giving him a permanent own home on my altar. So I have to think of who's going to be watching, what are the things who might be inviting into my house, should I be doing um, a certain level of protection magic just to make sure that it's like, no, I'm talking to this particular person, this particular spirit, I don't want anybody else involved. Y'all can remain on the periphery, this is not a big invitation for everybody else. That's something that you just need to be aware of. So yeah, that's how basically I go about it with the four steps of how to plan out a spell. It's something I've been doing ever since the, um, I knew the eclipse was coming. Um, the eclipse was very, very rushed spelled for me. I kind of found out a week beforehand that it was happening because I wasn't all that aware. I was still pretty new to the witchcraft thing. I was like, well, this is like a once in a lifetime. I have to do it. And ever since then, I've been like, you know what? I definitely should plan out my spells a little bit better. Be aware of what major events are coming up. And with mundane life that just gets in the way all the time, sometimes you really do just need to put down in the calendar, spend time at altar. This is time for ritual planning preparation. And it's good for your budget because if you're planning ahead of time, then you're not rushing to mass order things online supply wise. This is YouTuber, so there will be a new video up tomorrow. See you guys. Have a great day.